Hey, what's up YouTube? This is the Mermail Master coming at you from the Team Time Riders YouTube channel with an updated spellbook profile. Um, I remember, uh, if you remember, I recorded a spellbook profile um, maybe like two or three months ago. And today I'm coming to bring you an updated spellbook profile. But this is not just any book profile. This is going to be Reaper Spellbooks. Now, I have been struggling consistently to try and get this deck to work with the limiting of Reasoning. Reasoning was a fantastic card that really... Uh, you know, improved the skill ceiling on the spellbook deck and really brought it into, you know, its new kind of era. I've been thinking between running like Demise or running like, um, you know, other different types of cards to just get like your things to your hand or to be able to ditch them from your deck to your graveyard. Um, I've just been going through a lot of testing with this deck and I think I found something that can be, you know, good if a little bit inconsistent. Reaper is very inconsistent at this current point in time. And is not the is far from the optimal build of spellbooks. But as I mentioned in my video discussing lawn mowing next door, that Reaper could one day have its time in the sun again. So without further ado, let's get into the deck profile, and I'll explain my choices along the way. So starting out with my choices is three copies of my spellbook magician of prophecy. Um, Spellbook Magician of Prophecy is basically the only card that can be searched by, uh, the only monster that can be searched by secrets, and a fantastic, fantastic card um, for just like having, fielding a, uh, just a normal Spellbook monster and a Spellcaster and getting, you know, the cards that you need from your deck to your hand when you need them to be there. Um, this can search any Spellbook, which is pretty much most of the deck, so it jumpstarts a lot of your combos if you can get this card to your hand. Next, we're running three copies of Reaper of the Prophecy. And Reaper is basically the linchpin of the deck and the reason why you run the deck. Reaper of Prophecies has three different effects um, that you get when it's normal or special summon based on the number of spellbook cards you have in your graveyard. So its first effect, when it's special summoned, you get the ability to be able to... Um, to... Um, if it, if you control if you have three spell books in your graveyard um, with different names if you have three different named spell books in your graveyard um, you can make this guy gain 600 attack which brings him from 20 to 2600 and makes him a target for eradicator ec epidemic virus if you have four or more spell books in your graveyard um, with different names you can add one spell book spell card from your deck to your hand so he's kind of like you know, basically another copy of Spellbook Magician of Prophecy that um, replaces himself upon summoning. And then finally, um, if you have five or more spell cast, uh, spellbooks with different names in your graveyard, which is the point that you really, really want to get to, you get the ability to be able to special summon a level six or higher spellcaster type monster straight from your deck. Um, from your hand or deck and the monster that you usually want to summon with that um, the dark spellcaster is two copies of prophecy destroyer um, this guy has you know he he's not really been run in met very many things as of recent but in reaper you know you can fetch him and you can go into a rank six such as like norito the moral leader which is also in the extra deck of this deck um, this card is very very strong and you absolutely need to run this card in the deck just to, I guess, push forward some of your plays and to make, you know, to have something other than a Reaper to special summon off of that effect. Um, he also has an effect in the graveyard where you can banish three spellbook cards to special summon him to the field. But I think that that effect conflicts a little bit too much with Fate, which is the card that you really want to use to be banishing those spellbooks, as well as keeping the spellbooks in the grave with Reaper. So he, he should have had that effect where, you know, once per turn he gets a special summon himself to the field if you have three or more spell books in your graveyard. But perhaps uh, they figured that would be a little bit too broken. The art is uh, really good, though, and he looks fantastic as an ultimate rare. Um, next is two copies of High Priestess of Prophecy for, you know, when you have uh, those hands that you really need to draw into. Um, this is a good card for just pushing for more, um, for more damage and pushing for more extensions of your plays. Then we have one Fool of Prophecy. I couldn't for the life of me figure out why people really like this card. Perhaps it was something that had to do with the uh, the reasoning build of Prophecy, but I feel like one Fool is just enough. Um, he takes up your normal summon um, and doesn't special summon you your Reaper until the end phase. And it's an effect that can only be activated on your turn, unfortunately, and only if you ditch your spellbook from your deck to your graveyard. 
Granted, though, he is good because he can decrease the number of dead draws that you have to run in order to run Reaper, and you know, like you'll see some of those spellbooks in the deck as I move forward. Um, so he can get those things out of the graveyard, things that like you know in your hand would be completely useless. Um, so yeah, he's good for that. And then finally, um, one copy of Injection Fairy Lily rounds out the monsters. So that is everything for the monsters. Um, basically, she's run as like a spellcaster, and you can use her for um, just like randomly like beating into your opponent, or um, you know, protect her with fate or with like wisdom or something. So you'll always be able to beat over large monsters. Uh, that's it for the monsters. Moving on to the spells. This is where the spell counts gets crazy. Um, we have three copies of Spellbook of Secrets. Really, really fantastic card. Jumpstarts all your plays. One Secrets is pretty much enough to... Uh, one Secrets and then any other Spellbook in hand is enough to you know load up the graveyard significantly for like Fate and whatnot. And can fetch any Spellbook from anywhere uh, from, from your deck to your hand. And with this much search power and potential, Secrets is an absolutely necessary evil. Two copies of Crescent, because we don't have Judgment, and because Crescent can just fetch things from your deck to your hand. Two copies of Fate. Uh, three is a little bit too many, and you um, are always vying to try and have enough different named spellbooks in your graveyard to be able to activate the effects. Um, you can fix it with Eternity, but Fate is a necessary card that you have absolutely have to run in, um, in doubles in the deck. Two Tower. Recycle back all your stuff. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, you don't use his popping effect, but if he gets popped, um, you special summon a spell book, uh, spellcaster monster equal to the number of spell cards you have in your uh, graveyard. Unfortunately, though, your opponent can chain an MST to its standby phase effect to shuffle back something to your deck and draw a card. So um, if that happens, the card misses timing and it doesn't activate that effect, which is kind of just kind of unfortunate if you think about it. But you know what can you do? Two Wisdom, protect your monsters from spells and traps. Um, you know, this includes even monsters in the Pendulum scale as well. Very, very good card, and you should run it. Um, a lot of people have been cutting it down to one, but I don't really know how I feel about that. Two Master, basically used as an extra spellbook name. Um, there's little else to that. Um, you can use Master to copy any normal spellbook, so not like a quick play or anything like that. Uh, you use Spellbook of the Master to um, copy secrets most of the time, and then you can also copy um, Eternity to fetch back extra spellbooks from your graveyard, from your Vanish Zone, or you can copy Power um, to stack two effects on top of one another and um, attack into your opponent. And if you destroy a monster, um, usually possibly with like in Injection Fairy Lily or something like that, um, you get to draw. Uh, you get to add two spellbooks from your deck to your hand instead of one, and inflict even more damage to your opponent. Two copies of Spellbook of Eternity, pretty much same deal, fetching things back from your Banish Zone instead of your deck. Um, fantastic card. Uh, love this card a lot, and I absolutely think it needs to be run it too. And then finally, we have two copies of Spellbook of, of Life. Unlike some of your other Spellbook monsters, um, he does, um, your, uh, your Reaper doesn't really specify that he has to be special. Like, unlike World of Prophecy, for instance, your Reaper doesn't have to, um, specify where he was summoned from so you can basically use spellbook of life on reaper um get him back and just like keep the revival train going and it also counts as a spellbook so it can be searched with secrets and it can be searched with like pretty much um, a lot of the different cards in this deck so you can cycle this through again but um in most decks choose to run just one of this card um in reaper variants you have to have two and then um Rounding out the rest of the spellbooks, we have our one of we have one of uh, spellbook of power, um, one copy of spellbook library of the heliosphere. This is in here mostly for another spellbook name. I think this was meant to be used with pigeonholing book of spells, otherwise called uh, spellbook reorganization. So you just stack the top of your deck with spellbooks, activate this card, and then draw two. But even if you get two spellbooks like that, um, it's a plus zero at best. It's a plus one at best and a minus one at worst. And most people just don't even want to take the uh, take the plunge, but um, an extra spellbook name is an extra spellbook name, and you know you can't really uh, beggars can't be choosers when it comes to that. There are ways to get this out of your hand though and into the graveyard, so something to think about. One copy of Spellbook of Miracles. Um, this card is a fantastic card, but it's just a little bit too situational. Um, I think if Spellbooks had the ability to con consistently like field X Y Z monsters, Spellbook of Miracles would be 
an absolute staple in the deck. We're born an XYZ monster from the graveyard and attach two uh, spell, book, spell cards to it as XYZ materials. Um, really, really good card. You'll see some of the things that we use with it. And then finally, a copy of Star Hall. <coughs> One of the only cards that utilizes spell, book, uh, spell counters in a spell book, uh, deck. Also another name for your Reaper plays, but if you get this onto the field and you can activate it, um, it can ramp up your monsters to absurdly high attack values, which is super, super good for like any play that you really want to make. Moving on to the non-spellbook spells. Um, this is my secret tech in the deck um, that I think makes Reaper really, really, you know, helpful because there are hands that I have where I just draw Reaper and I just draw like, you know, my spell book, like my monsters and I just can't do anything with them. But with Magical Dimension, um, it's a quick play spell card. So, you know, if your opponent is definitely going to remove your monster from the field, tribute a spell caster type monster, special summon another spell book, um, spell caster type monster from your hand or um, from your hand to the field. And that can include, um, the Reaper, the Prophecy Destroyer, or even um, High Priestess of Prophecy, get any one of them to the field. And as I mentioned, since Reaper doesn't care how he's normal or special summoned, this will trigger his effect even on the opponent's turn as well, um, allowing you to like get extra searches, get extra monsters, um, you know, put more pressure on your opponent, you know, free up the field for uh, Eradicator plays or something like that. Um, but yeah, um, Magical Dimension is very, very good. And I think, you know, with Reasoning at one, um, the deck is struggling. And I'm hoping that this card can be something that can really help the Spellbook deck moving forward. And the final card is, of course, that one Reasoning. Um, this very, very sadly went to one. Um, without Reasoning, Reaper Spellbooks cannot be. Um, the deck is just too fragile and too easy to stop and too pretty without reasoning to be able to mill the cards. So um, we're very excited for Lawn Mowing Next Door to be able to come and to, um, you know, be able to like make a 60 card Reaper Spellbook deck and be able to play Spellbooks how uh, we want to play them again. So excited for that. And that's going to round out the giant list of spells. For traps to round us up at 40 cards, we have three of them. Uh, one Eradicator Epidemic Virus. You can easily make this with Reaper, with um, with your uh, Prophecy Destroyer, or with any other cards that you want. Um, Eradicator is a fantastic card. Um, destroy your opponent's spells or trap cards that they have. And thinking about throwing also a Deck Debbie in this deck as well, but Eradicator has been doing a fantastic job at uh, you know just preventing your opponent from activating whatever whatever like spell cards they want and slowing down the pace of play to something that's a little bit more manageable for this deck to handle one copy of call of the haunted um again for special summoning them out of the graveyard very good card and finally um one ultimate providence for just ditching your monsters to the graveyard um, so that's it for the main deck. Moving on to the extra deck, which is very, very small and consists of right now only two monsters because the rest of the things are up to personal preference. Uh, one is um, Shining Elf because it's a spellcaster monster. You don't really use its effect to decrease the attack of a monster by 500, but you have it in here because it's a spellcaster and um, it's something that you can easily revive back with your spellbook of miracles. And then the main XYZ that you always want to go into is Norido the Moral Leader. Noridu is a great, great card for stopping your opponent. I actually picked this up to try and run it in Hieratics, but I couldn't um, run it in the Hieratic deck because it requires only spellcasters. But during either player's turn, you can detach a material from this card to negate a spell card or trap card your opponent activates. So selective negation on that level combined with fate to banish whatever monsters your opponent has and miracles to revive back Norido whenever he goes to the graveyard you know, you're having like a really, really strong, you know, set up board. The thing is getting to that board. Once you have that board with Norido backed by like a ton of your, uh, your spellbook spell cards, um, you're pretty much going to be able to grind and win the game from there. But the point is getting to that level and being able to summon this card to the field. Um, so that's, yeah, that's it for the main deck and the extra deck right now. Um, I believe it's a 40 card main and a right now two card extra deck. Um, I'd like to really thank you guys for watching this deck profile and for, um, you know, bearing with me. 
um, I'm going to have my, uh, this is the second of my spellbook builds, and in very, very short order, I'm going to be doing a profile on my main spellbooks, which you should look forward to on the channel very, very soon. Um, the spellbook deck that I actually run, um, it is a uh, temperance spellbook build, which is my favorite way to play the deck. So feel free to look forward to that coming soon within the next couple of months. Um, if you want to see the video sooner, please remember to leave a like and comment and letting me know. And yeah, um, so this has been this deck profile um, for my Reaper spellbooks. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe on the Team Time Riders YouTube channel. And uh, this has been the Mermail Master with Team Time Riders, and I'm signing out. Catch you guys next time. Peace.